All right, so thank you everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us on our Member Benefit Program in partnership with Graphisoft. My name is Lauren of DocMov and I am the Program Coordinator here with AIA California. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, go over the agenda for the day. That way you all know what to expect. Uh, we'll do some introductions with the presenters we have here today, then they will do a little presentation for you all. Uh, we'll try to break for question and answers after each presentation in case you have presentation specific questions, and then we'll be more than happy to answer those for you. And then at the end, we'll wrap it up with a Q&A session. Great, thank you. <clears throat> um, yeah, it is a 2019 member benefit program. Um, so uh, I want to welcome uh, Heather Young with uh, FGY Architects and also Anthony Laney with Laney LA. Uh, they will you know, both be presenting today. Uh, they've got some great presentations to uh, kind of take you through how they're using um, uh, Archicad and uh, BIM and technology in their practice. Uh, before we get started, uh, I just want to kind of introduce myself a little bit. Uh, so my name is Tom Simmons. I'm with Arch Vista Consulting. We're based in Oakland in the Bay Area. And uh, we uh, focus on uh, BIM Consulting and services as well as sales of Archicad. So if you are interested in that, do please talk to me at the end. We'll talk more about that as we go through this process. For those of you who are new to this, uh, BIM or Building Information Modeling, as we like to call it, uh, at Graphisoft is virtual building. Uh, but the idea that you're bringing a building, uh, you're modeling a building, and out of that building you're deriving uh, you know, uh, model information, coordinating documents, coordinating systems, uh, bringing out your elevations, your sections, all the documentation is interconnected. So when you make one change in one area, it updates throughout the entire model. And this is really what, what BIM is about and is what's really strong about the BIM process. With that said, uh, one of the things I just want to touch on uh, before we get started is how BIM is used in an architecture workflow. Uh, so, in, what we usually typically see is in the design phase, people are using SketchUp. And then as they kind of move into documentation, they rebuild the model into Vectorworks, uh, Autodesk, Revit, or Chief Architect, uh, or any number of other applications. Um, and it's a very typical workflow, it kind of is unfortunate, um, in that you have to rebuild the model in order to move it into the next step. We'd like to talk about getting rid of that process and really we're using one process for both design and documentation and one solution. Um, and both of our presenters today will kind of take you through their steps and their process and, and talk about various ways they're using it um, in design and then all the way through into their documentation as well. Uh, one of the things I do want to point out, if you are unfamiliar with Archicad, is it does have built into it a sketch style modeling solution, very similar to SketchUp in terms of being able to push and pull uh, model components, uh, which enables you to be able to create a uh, similar type of massing and modeling and, and sculpting um, that you might do in SketchUp. And that's one of the reasons why it's growing in popularity with SketchUp users. Um, and also, I think even more importantly, um, if you're familiar with the sort of follow me command in SketchUp, uh, it also has that uh, same kind of process to be able to draw 3D lines and then draw detail shapes around those 3D lines. And that really helps to build uh, and create 3D modeled elements uh, uh, in, in real time much faster. Uh, the BIMX solution is a great part of this design process. It enables you to take <clears throat> Archicad into BIMX, take it to mobile devices, and be able to use it uh, to interconnect the plans and the 3D together. Uh, you'll see some of that today. And it's a really uh, fascinating and great way of um, interconnecting your model with your design and take it out to presentation for clients. <clears throat> There's also built into it a Cinemeter, gives you really high rendering quality as part of Cinema 4D, which is a really high rendering uh, system in Archicad. And finally, just to let everybody know, uh, recently um, at the convention, uh, the AI convention in Las Vegas, it was announced that um, the Unreal Engine, um, or, or I should say Epic Games in partnership with Graphsoft, are going to uh, be making available to Archicad 23 users, which will be um, 
that is going to be released here in the next uh, couple of months, uh, the ability to do real-time rendering uh, in connection with ARCHICAD. So this is going to be a new uh, feature that will be available shortly. So what we're here today to talk about as well is what the California, AI California is doing as a member value program uh, for uh, the AI members. And that is to offer, um, in partnership with Graphsoft, a 25% savings for AIA members. Um, and uh, this can be applied to ARCHICAD or ARCHICAD Solo through September 27th. And also it'll include eight on-demand training sessions. Um, you can find more information about uh, the details on this at uh, the URL below. And we'll also send out a URL. I know it's a long URL. We'll send out this URL to everybody at the uh, end of the presentation as well. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand this off to Heather, who's going to take you through her process um, and how she uses ARCHICAD in her firm. Thanks, Tom. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Heather Young from Fergus Garber Young Architects in Palo Alto. Our firm of 27 uh, does a broad range of project types from custom single family, small scale multifamily, mixed use, and commercial office. And, and these are just a few of the projects Heather, we've done in the last few years. Heather, yes? you want to share your screen too? I, I thought I was. Let's see. Did you? But I hit it. Sorry. Hold on a second. Is everybody seeing it? No. Uh, hold on. No problem. Now we good? Yep. Okay, I apologize. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, so anyway, um, here's uh, again some of our, our projects and let me see if I can move you guys out of the way for just a moment. Um, our office, um, uh, this is just us and some of uh, our office culture. And actually, we're really pleased. Uh, we were the Silicon Valley Firm Award winner in 2018. And um, partly that's due to our work, but it's, it's also a large part in due to our office culture and our promotion of uh, emerging architects. And as you are wondering, how do we use ARCHICAD in our practice? And uh, actually, Tom's presentation cues in pretty directly because uh, when we started using ARCHICAD in 2008, I believe, uh, we were using SketchUp to create models. And then we were using AutoCAD to draft 2D for our plans, elevations, our, our complete drawing set. But everything changed when we started using ARCHICAD. And a typical project will start with modeling the site and some of the adjacent buildings. Then we'll use uh, the tools to build a building volume so that we can help our clients, <coughs> excuse me, understand the the zoning opportunities on their site, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's with ARCHICAD, it's really easy to put together simple presentation sheets to show uh, traditional elevations, perspectives, and plans. Once we come up with a concept, then we use the tools to build simple models and again are able to easily generate 3D views and head-on elevations, and because we're already in a intelligent program, we don't have to have multiple models in SketchUp uh, and ARCHICAD. The what you see in the model is actually a reflection of what's been built in the program. And another great feature is that you can use the zone tool to quickly create scheduled to have area calculations and breakdowns, which is super tricky in our area because of the tight restrictions on allowable building area. 
what you're seeing here is a pretty basic model. And the next thing we usually do is look at a sketch rendering version of the tool. The sketch rendering tool lets us explore mass and shadow and volume um, without focusing too much on color and specific material. And it's a great transition as the volumes and the design develop, but we don't have to get overly focused in materiality. That said, we love the materiality. And the next few slides are gonna show how we've actually gone from that sketch to a more fully rendered model and then the actual uh, built project. And our clients really find that the ability to explore the model with them during meetings is a, is a great way for them to begin to engage with the project, understand why we keep talking about the proportion of this and the relationship of that um, in the project. It, it really is a great way to engage clients in the project and the design process. And this is a, a duplex project here in Palo Alto. Um, this is a, a fourplex multifamily in Menlo Park. And you can see the model went through different iterations before we uh, landed on a, a final design that was then executed. Um, we also use it for our interiors projects. This is a, a VC interiors project on Sand Hill Road here in Palo Alto. Um, we were able to uh, really dig into some of the materiality and the, the lighting to help our clients understand the project. And Tom didn't mention uh, one of the features of Twin Motion, this new Unreal Epics rendering tool, which is the global illumination tool. And that is going to allow us to have even better lighting, both interior and exterior, as we develop our models to, to help everybody envision the project. Uh, another simple project, this was a existing um, Butler Building warehouse that we were able to elevate and completely refurbish and bring a, a new life to here in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. um, also, single family home construction in uh, Menlo Park and more um, office development here in Palo Alto. Uh, this is a, a two-unit duplex here in Palo Alto, and you can see the model is, is fairly well developed. What I asked our, our summer intern from uh, Cal Poly to do was to very quickly create a fly-through that you can do yourself um, using the, the walk tool in ARCHICAD. And this gives us the ability to take the model to create a very simple fly around and then give that file to our clients so that they can view it at home and share it with their family or with their other work associates or their, or their board. Our, our summer intern has only been using Archicad for a couple of months and I asked him to do this and he was able to put this together in about an hour. So it's, it's, it's pretty simple and pretty easy to do. And this project uh, was completed just a few months ago. Again, you can see how some of the earlier designs had different massing, different approaches uh, than the final built project. One of the things that the city asked us to do was to prepare for them sun studies so that they could see the impact of the new constructed building on the local environment. The area is commercially zoned, but this adjacent property was actually a single family home, and they were very concerned that a new three-story building would obliterate their, their son. And because we were able to do this and share this with both the local homeowners and with the the Architectural Review Board and the City Council, they were able to approve the project. The client 
uh, for this particular project was very excited to bring a new three-story office building to a more traditional area of Palo Alto that was very close to the Caltrain station, but didn't have a lot of new office Class A construction. It, it's more of a 1950s, 60s uh, development area. So he asked us to develop this video that showed people just how close the project actually was to the Caltrain station. And you can see uh, the rendering and the, the video fly through as you see the building, then go into the project, are able to see the potential interior build out in a very open floor plan, and then come back out to the street. And uh, this video was shared with the city. It was also shared with a number of clients. And I'm delighted to say that Tinder is now uh, the new tenant who's moving into this building. And that's, uh, again, the finished project. And um, just wanted to say thank you to everybody. And I, I hope this is giving you um, a little taste of how we use ArchiCAD in our office. And maybe it helps you envision how you can use it in yours. So I'm going to uh, hand it over to Anthony. OK, great. Thanks, Heather. Share my screen. Tom and Heather, can you see that? Absolutely. OK. All right. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Anthony Laney. I'm a licensed architect. I lead a firm called Laney LA in Hermosa Beach, California. And so to whoever is out there, you can see me, I assume, but I cannot see you. I do see a list of names, so I just want to say hello to a few names I recognize. Hello, Joseph, Megan, Frank, Holly, Ethan, and Dean. Hello, guys. Um, yeah, so here we go. Um, I assume we come from all different sorts of backgrounds, but I want to start with what I think we have in common. Um, I like to believe that as architects, we all want to make an impact. Um, and then personally, as an ArchiCAD nerd, um, I do want to leverage the very best digital tools. And I have a feeling that's what we might, as a diverse virtual audience, I have a feeling that's what we might have in common is we all want to make an impact. We all want to use the very best digital tools. And so for the purpose of this journey that I want to take you on in the next 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to lump all tools in this category of tech. I'm going to lump, lump all impact into this category of touch. Um, and this has become my personal obsession, is high tech, high touch. This is the idea that I want to explore. And so for the past five years, I've been trying to figure out how can we create a team of architects that can consistently de deliver services that are high tech and high touch, and how do we do that from scratch? Um, I'm constantly kind of recognizing that so much design thinking goes into the projects of architecture and it's my passion to try to bring design thinking into the practice of architecture and that's where tools like ArchiCAD become I think very 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 helpful. Um, quick background it all started five years ago I launched my practice with my wife Krista now we have three kids uh, so of course my life is full of jumping and screaming and crying and Legos and sometimes my kids are into those things as well promise that's my only joke. Okay, so we began our firm uh, five years ago with a simple conviction. We wanted to create a firm where a young designer didn't have to choose between thoughtful work and a healthy work environment. And that's where I so applaud Heather's comments about firm culture. It's certainly important to us. Uh, granted, when we launched five years ago, we were all crammed into my tiny little unair conditioned garage. So clearly a healthy work environment had to mean something more to us than just physical or monetary perks. And this will come up a little bit later. Um, but what did we do? We figured out a way to design very special beach homes. Uh, this is Hermosa Beach, California. Uh, but more importantly, we tried to make the process as delightful as the product. So a client would come to us and would say, we want a beautiful modern home with lots of glass, contemporary to bring in uh, the ocean views. And I just knew that I did not want to show them this. I knew that I, it wasn't, I didn't want to show them the typical architectural deliverable. Uh, I wanted to show them something like this. I wanted our clients to dream vividly with us. I wanted to ignite their imagination. I wanted to wow them with every deliverable, but of course there's a problem. Efficiency often comes at the expense of customization and customization often comes at the expense of profitability. And so I wanted to try to solve that. And again, that's where ArchiCAD comes in handy. 
And so my question is, of course, how do we get both? It's easy to open up a BIM software out of the box and kind of feel this sense of efficiency. It's also easy to graduate from architecture school with a set of digital tools that enables you to make nice presentations. But again, how do you do both? And that's what we call high tech, high touch. Um, how do we leverage the radical efficiency of BIM while still providing our clients with this I would custom built from scratch experience? Um, and so that's where ARCHICAD comes in. I think many of the tools that are adjacent to ARCHICAD, as well as many of the processes that relate to ARCHICAD become very helpful. And so I want to share a few of those, kind of like Heather did from our process uh, today. Uh, so first, and uh, similar to what Heather showed, uh, I want to do everything I can to bring our clients close to the design process, which means we're a good fit for clients who actually really want to understand visually what are the site conditions, what are the zoning parameters, what are the code limitations, and how do we make all of those visual? How do we use um, inspiration images in part of the process? Um, and so if we zoom into this idea, the natural implication is our clients start to see the design evolve. They're very close to that process. And so here I'm showing how we use the ARCHICAD zone tool to generate multiple options in the very early schematic design phase. And then we overlay those options so that they kind of dance and, and we're just showing multiple options all at once. Um, and so rather than spending a ton of time producing a flat diagram with detailed line weights, we've moved much more radically into presenting what we call live modeling or live design. And that is certainly not for everyone. There's a certain pressure when you're on stage with ARCHICAD open, but similar to how I've seen uh, lots of architects use SketchUp, it's really fun when a client is sitting next to you with ARCHICAD open, they start throwing out ideas. They'll say, hey, what if we put a window there? And we're literally clicking in it live and there it is before their eyes. And so I feel that for a client, that's kind of a fun experience. Um, here's another example. This I just grabbed this off of our desk. We were working on this just a few days ago. This is a project that's an early schematic design in the city of Mammoth. Uh, we just met with the client, so here I'm taking a live uh, to a 3D section showing the floor plan, and we were literally with the client pushing and pulling different elements um, kind of in real time. Um, and so eventually, of course, this schematic model evolves into more photorealistic renderings, and we endlessly experiment with a ton of in-house and outsourced services. Um, and then we also take our ARCHICAD model and export that to our Form 2 printer um, to produce a whole host of 3D prints. And so it's, it's those deliverables that are common for us. And so, of course, for this audience, for this virtual audience of architects, it's very natural for us to mentally cut a section and see how that relates to the model that you hold. But I feel like I found that it's just not normal for a client to visualize that. And so, again, a big part of our process is to try to make that as visual as possible. And so clearly, we're just exporting a floor plan from ARCHICAD, overlaying it on top of a photo, and that becomes just a way for us to tell the story of the project. Here's another video from our work just this last week. It's a more developed version of a custom home in Manhattan Beach. Of course, this model gets more and more mature over time, but the truth is changes are still inevitable. And I think that's where the power of them becomes very, very useful again. A client may come to us and describe their dream for a light coastal plantation home. We may show them something like this, uh, but then the truth is they may be inspired by a recent trip to Tulum. So we have, they come with new ideas and we show them this. And uh, we did this transformation for a real project um, right on the coast in Seal Beach. And our BIM model literally allowed us to make all those changes just in a matter of one to two days instead of one to two weeks um, using ARCHICAD. Um, and so as the design evolves, uh, of course, we want our clients to understand that this 3D model is not just a cosmetic tool. We want them to understand that the BIM model contains all of the engineering and the intelligence that our builder truly cares about. Of course, we care about how the project looks on the outside. Um, but more than that, I feel like it's our job to care about the things that are unseen, right? I feel like we're all, le I'm learning that that's what really affects the way that the project looks, making it simple is actually not simple. And so we really geek out on these 3D diagrams uh, built in ARCHICAD in order to communicate what's important to us about the project. Of course, that's paired with all sorts of uh, material studies. Those are done outside of ARCHICAD, ARCHICAD, but they're all tagged and linked inside of ARCHICAD as well. Um, back to the topic of engineering, once schematic design is underway, one of the more powerful improvements that we've experienced in our workflow is that our structural engineers are literally working at the same time in our same file. There's no importing, no exporting. We are simply working at the same time on our BIM server, working on different layers in parallel, and this has radically transformed the way that we collaborate with our engineers. 
So here's another home in Manhattan Beach. Um, we're kind of zooming through, just looking at all the structures that our structural engineer has built. Um, and so it's not that problems don't exist, it's that we catch them early. It's very much a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get processed. So literally two days ago, I was working on this. I'm cutting two sections, one in each direction, and I'm about to turn on the structural layer, and I'm about to make translucent my floor slab, and you'll immediately see what the problem is. So there I turn on my structural layer, I'm about to make translucent the floor, and you'll see that I've got this steel uh, garage header that fell below the floor assembly. Um, and once you can clearly see the problem, it becomes much easier to fix the problem. All right, uh, one more example. In this video, we took a different approach. We were actually, for a number of reasons, working with an engineer who did not use ARCHICAD, and so we ended up modeling the uh, structure ourselves. In purple, you see the shear walls. In blue, you see the steel. In orange, you see the engineered wood, and then our wood joists are there in yellow. <clears throat> And after design is done, of course, which it never really is, uh, our goal is to bring our clients close to the construction process. And as silly as it might sound for this audience, as unnecessary as it might feel, uh, we actually uh, really enjoy showing our clients how stair framing relates to the stair section. And we use a um, BIMX a lot to help us do that. Um, you know, I, it's probably clear, it's my passion to try to illustrate the connection between the simple perspective sketch and the framing progress on site. I wanna make sure that everyone sees how this is related to the project concept and the layout of the property. And just to push back to ARCHICAD, I want our clients to really experience how the complexity of the section um, really does accomplish the simplicity of the architecture. I want them to kind of be close to that process. Um, and this next part is maybe a little bit less for my clients, but more for my staff. Uh, we often go to great lengths to try to connect our construction documents to what's happening in the field just for that internal education. We, we, we're a younger firm, we've been around for five years, and so uh, it's been fun to make some radical leaps in terms of our maturity in construction administration. Um, and when all the retaining walls are formed, this is another home in Manhattan Beach, I want my staff to see what is unseen. I want them to like immediately imagine the courtyard above the building uh, as opposed to just what's on site there. Um, it came up with Tom, came up a little bit with Heather, uh, talking about how we communicate with the client. We do so many screen recordings. We use a software called ScreenFlow. And so traditionally, when you produce a deliverable for a client, you can either email it or host an in-person meeting. And clearly, there's benefits to both ways. Uh, but using a screen recording app, I think we can get the best of both worlds. And so this was a video that I made to send out I'm narrating a bunch of 3D sections uh, built straight in ARCHICAD. And so I have my, again, it's, 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 I, I might need to say this, but I think it's incredibly obvious. All these sections are generated from the 3D model. Um, I'm overlaying that on my ARCHICAD sheet with a 3D perspective. And those two things, of course, match up perfectly. And then I can tell the story of those sections. Um, we also use, we also record our screen on our iPad a lot. And so this is an image of me zooming through a renovation in Redondo Beach. I'm pausing the recording at certain points, overlaying an inspiration image, and then packaging that up and sending it to the client. Um, I, I'm sure you can tell BIMX is probably my favorite tool from Graphisoft. Um, it's, I have all my projects on my iPhone, which means I can take all my information everywhere. And so in this video, um, you know, I'm, I literally recorded it a few days ago. I'm overlaying the 2D kitchen interior elevation in context onto the 3D model from which it's generated. And to have that power, I just think is awesome. Um, here's another version of it where I can quickly adjust in 3D the cutting plane. Um, and so for us, I just think like this is one of the purest examples of what we would consider high tech and high touch. Um, and of course, uh, if anyone follows us, we, you know that we uh, really have fun sharing things on social media, and so we're always capturing our screen um, to kind of produce little pieces of content to tell the story of our, of our projects. Um, our work in ARCHICAD was recently a big theme for our AIA national takeover. Um, we really do enjoy making the design process as visual as possible. Um, and kind of showing like how all the parts of the process relate to one another. Um, leveraging ARCHICAD has pushed us farther into defining our process and really starting 
to become more and more obsessed with metrics and dashboards and just trying to get a really clear picture about where projects are on track and off track. And one of the tools we use is actually pretty simple. It's basically a simple spreadsheet where we can look at a project-based profitability. Um, it's, a, it's what we call the effective hourly rate. And so here you can see our most recent 20 projects um, kind of laid out in terms of uh, chronological order, but then we sort them in terms of high to low for project-based profitability. And what I think is powerful about this is you can then look at the high profitability projects and say, why? Why were those so uh, profitable? And look at the low ones and say, why were those so unprofitable? And often as we audit that process, one of the most impactful components has to do with the way that we leverage or do not leverage effective BIM tools. Um, when we do leverage it right, I think the punchline for us is that it leaves much more time for the things that we love, uh, like Team Talks. It's probably the thing that our office is asked about the most. Every Monday morning, we have our weekly internal lecture series, and it's simply designed to promote curiosity and elevate our collective conscious. But again, when we're able to be both creative, um, high touch, as well as high tech and leverage those tools effectively, it leaves a lot more time for this. Um, and so I really do appreciate everyone listening. In conclusion, I'm very excited to see and even be a part of the rapid growth of the ARCHICAD community. It's certainly exciting to be a part of. Um, I really personally love engaging other firms like Heather's to share and learn from each other's process. Um, my only request is that you consider joining the conversation. Connect with us on Instagram. We're always hiring. We'd love to connect. Again, thanks to everyone for listening. And I think now I'm going to turn it back over to Tom to lead a Q&A. Great. Thank you, Anthony. Let me get my screen shared here. Uh, here we go. All right. Okay. So thank you, everybody. Uh, so yes, yeah, so if you're interested in uh, learning more, please feel free to contact myself here in Northern California. Uh, or uh, you can contact uh, Kyle McClifton. Uh, he is, is representing and working uh, for Southern California. Uh, or you can also inquire at the blog um, dot grasshopus.com slash program slash 2019-AIACC-BIM-Bundle. Um, and I'll certainly forward that link to you. And this BIM uh, bundle is with the AIA uh, member, um, uh, for AIA members is good through uh, September 27th. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna turn it over to Lauren, who is, uh, uh, has questions coming through. Um, and uh, we'll start taking questions. Great, thank you. So the first question is, as a firm that uses ARCHICAD, how often are you creating custom objects, doors, windows, curtain wall systems? This came in when Anthony was speaking. Cool, I'll, I'll jump in. Hey, Ethan, um, hope you're doing well. Um, we, it's very often that we're designing custom door panels. Uh, that's where you use the slab tool in plan view, and it basically builds a new door part to use, of course, in like elevation view. So we do that all the time. A little bit less so with Windows. We're always importing, editing, or building from scratch um, objects, uh, whether those are furniture-based or like kind of unique uh, hardware-based. Um, I haven't personally gotten built custom uh, objects in the curtain wall system. I have a few people sitting next to me who have. Um, but it's, yes, I would say it's a fairly, uh, reliable part of our process to not find what we need right out of the box, but to invest a little bit of time into building something. Great. Thank you for that. The next question, uh, which either Anthony or Heather could address is any information about a passive house plugin? I might need oh, to lean on Heather for uh, this one. Yeah, we've, we've done uh, two passive houses, or two passive homes up here, but I don't know of a passive house plug-in. Um, uh, Tom may know of something. I mean, there, there are uh, the Ecotech tool. I, I guess you could set the parameters to help you achieve those goals, but I don't know that there's something specifically designed for 
passive house. Do you, Tom? Yeah, I don't think I was trying to remember. I don't think there is an actual specific plugin, but I know uh, many several firms that have exported Archicad model to various energy um, oh. analysis software programs externally and done that uh, from that standpoint. Okay. The next question are any basic recommendations for modeling 3D options in ARCHICAD, especially in the early phases? You want to start, Heather, and I'll jump in? Uh, sure. Um, there are lots of different ways you can approach that. Uh, some people early on use layers. Some people early on will use um, uh, uh, an array of forms and mod, uh, model objects in the same plan. As it gets more complicated, you can always do multiple file versions, but our favorite way to do it pretty much from the get-go is using the renovation filter. It's a really powerful tool, and the virtue is you can almost instantaneously flip from option to option while you are live in a design conversation or in a meeting or a presentation. You don't have to shift your view, change layer configurations. It, it's pretty seamless, um, but it does take a little bit longer to set up. But, but yeah, renovation filters is our go-to. Cool, yeah. Um, for us, this is a massive point of conversation within the studio. Um, we current we've seen, we've relied on renovation filters. We've kind of built the city of options. Um, we currently rely upon layer priorities to build um, multiple options right on top of each other. And um, you know we've used the morph tool. Um, we've used some of the basic slab and wall tools. But I, I think the piece, the tip that I would leave is because we've invested more heavily within favorites. Um, we're moving more toward using the wall, window, door, empty opening, and slab and roof tools, right, the, the kind of staple tools, in a way where the favorites are meant for early schematic design. And so it sounds kind of silly, but just to have the right texture of wood, something that's not too orange, you know, not too gray, um, to have this kind of like familiar palette has helped us kind of leap out of the gate really quickly in terms of modeling something that looks not too developed such that it'll scare your client or not too underdeveloped such that they won't understand it at all. Um, but, you know, we are using all the staple ARCHICAD tools right away because we've kind of dialed the properties to feel fairly simple. Okay, perfect. Um, the next question is, how long does it usually take for new users to get productive with the software? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, first off, it depends on, I'm sorry to say, how old they are. Um, we have folks who join our office who are uh, right out of school who have basically grown up using gaming programs and uh, are very comfortable in a 3D environment, and they they get it really quickly. And for them, they can start being productive and contributing to a project, you know, in a couple of weeks. Uh, to become fully proficient is usually a few months, and that's frankly because the program is so deep. There are, I mean, clearly Anthony is using a lot of the potential of Archicad. Um, our office tends to drill down on a few tools and. Um, there's so much more to the program that we could be doing, uh, but um, more mature users, somebody who is um, coming straight from a 2D environment, it, it may take them a little longer to uh, fully utilize the program, but I, I think you really will start to have useful documentation in just a few weeks. Cool. No, I, I totally agree with that. I think uh, those are the parameters that we deal with as well. Um, we've we put a lot of focus into trying to optimize the onboarding process. So we do measure that. Uh, one of the things we've recently been experimenting with is a modified user environment. 
um, kind of work environment such that rather than seeing literally hundreds of options surround the left and upper side of the screen, we pare that down, um, recording the screen with uh, kind of these self-made internal tutorials is also helpful. Um, and so I agree. I think I think somebody coming out of uh, a qualified architectural program can get up and running within a week. Absolutely. Um, and um, I think within a series of I'm going to say one to two months, they can be highly, highly productive. Um, and like any office, people come in all shapes and sizes and we have the super users. We have the power users and we have the, the folks who are very, very good at other things and they can kind of get by in Archicad. And so we try to kind of make room for all sorts of people in that range. Yeah, and we also find with uh, folks who are new to our office, part of that onboarding is something we call Archicad therapy, where every week we'll have a brown bag lunch and I'll invite them to open their project and fly around and show the other people what they're working on. And as that happens, there's an organic discussion about tips, tricks, shortcuts. Um, they'll also have the opportunity to say, I'm having trouble with this. And it, it's less about design and production and more about helping them get really comfortable with the program and gain the confidence that they need to, to grow and to experiment on their own. I like that. Great. Thank you both. Um, the next question is to both of you. As an office, how much time have you both allocated to creating and refining your favorites? Seems like that is very important to both firms. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll just throw out a, a few thoughts. Yes, yeah, so um, basically every 90 days we meet as an architecture department and uh, we say, okay, what's working, what's not working? And often, Archicad is a part of that conversation. And so I, I wish I could say that we just locked ourselves in a room for a week and emerged with the perfect kind of work environment and favorites for Archicad. For us, it's more of an iterative process. So every 90 days, we kind of throw up all the priorities, we decide what those are, and then different members of our team commit to tackling one of those in the next 90 days. And so often, um, a improving a certain ele element of the template is part of that. Almost always it's part of that. Um, often improving a certain category of our favorites is part of that. I, I feel the truth is, I just, I have such a strong preference not to try to like blitz something and hope that it stays fresh or evergreen. I'm just so used to the fact that this software literally changes every year. Our, our projects change every year. And so it's just part of our process, love it or hate it, to always try to be, you know, working in it. And that's why, you know, we'll hit a billable efficiency rate of 80% and the, the, the other 20% is working on things like this. I love that 90 day check-in review, um, team building and Archicad knowledge building. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna bring that back to my group. Um, we have two <clears throat> folks, uh, actually a third now, who in the office are in charge of developing the new template every time there's a new Archicad release. And in that template, we really um, try to focus on favorites and getting favorites um, embedded in people's workflow can be a challenge, but it, it really is a key to your long-term success and productivity in using the program. Um, one of the challenges uh, we have with a, a, a larger firm, and, and by no means large compared to a number of uh, California uh, firms, um, is that people have uh, a sort of a personal vested interest in the way things look. And sometimes it's an arrowhead, sometimes it's a font, sometimes it's, uh, yeah, I see that smile, Anthony. You, you, people really are passionate about how their graphics uh, are represented in a project. And yeah. so part of our challenge has been coming up with that shared uh, um, value for what is yeah. the right way to do something. 
And mm -hmm. uh, we, we also have to challenge different projects just by their nature have a different um, graphic expression that they need because it, it's just a challenge that doesn't come up in a different jurisdiction or a different project type. So it, it's a, a lot to get your arms around, but the, the earlier you can instill in your team the benefit of favorite, the happier everybody's going to be. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you both. Um, for Anthony, what was the process like to explore all the tools within Archicad? Did it happen organically with a project or was it a specific choice? Can you describe that process? Great. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I've met people who are Archicad geniuses or, or I, I use Revit at another firm and, and really enjoyed that as well. Uh, there are people who love going deep in software. I, I happen actually not to be one of those. So I'm very much motivated by using tools that accomplish something on a project or can delight a client or something like that. And so for me personally, it was organic, but I have recognized that I think for an office to kind of continue to innovate and thrive, you need people surrounding you who like just have that thirst to go deep into the software, almost for its own usefulness. And that individual can often be the tip of the spear to help then pull everyone else with them. And so on a weekly basis, we have this um, a round table, we call it headlines, where everyone's just announcing really, really fast um, things that they've learned. Um, and so it's often the super users that are helping to pave the way that set the bar and all of us are trying to like chase them. Um, and so I, I, I'm rereading the question, what was the process like to explore all tools? I honestly don't think I've ever attempted to do that, um, but I've been using Archicad, I think for like 15 years, and um, I, I'm, a, I'm very connected to the Archicad community. And so I'm just, I'm rubbing elbows with people who are brilliant at it. And I'm always listening for ways to make it better. And we recently paid Graphisoft to audit one of our template files. And they sent this like massive report. It made me feel so embarrassed because they showed me everything <laughs> I was doing wrong. Uh, but then thankfully they met with us. And, you know, I, I thought, wow, I, I thought I was a good Archicad user, but I have such a long way to go. And we, we literally had like a hundred things we wanted to improve, but I think that would have been dumb to do. So, you know, at our next staff meeting, we rolled out about five of them. And so we're just, I feel like it's just a balance between um, being aggressive always, but setting the pace that it's sustainable to keep that interest and keep that fire alive rather than like trying to do it all at once. Great, perfect. Uh, Tom, really quick, uh, since Anthony brought up the fact that um, Graphisoft did do an audit, are there any other benefits that weren't previously mentioned um, as far as the eight training sessions that come with the pricing that you all um, offer as support for our members if they were to join the Graphisoft team? Yeah, well, yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, the um the eight classes, uh, so just as a note to kind of review that for a minute, is uh, those are eight classes that, um, ran, that are meant to be basic training that go over various aspects of Archicad, the tools, how to create the building, use it for a variety of purposes. Um, it really does take you to about eight hours of, of uh, training and lessons, which is really quite helpful. Um, you know, in addition to that, there are quite a number of other um, uh, videos uh, and help documents and, and other things that are available. And uh, whether you're there purchasing in Southern California or Northern California, uh, we're always um, uh, very much um, a part of helping clients get up and running. And so we welcome mm -hmm. people to you know, ask questions and to uh, um, talk with us about how best to implement it into their companies. And speaking of templates, uh, that's another thing that we do. We work with clients actually to really help them implement this by developing templates that are focused on their process and um, trying to take their, their intellectual property they developed over the ages and put that into something that's going to help them grow their firm. Okay, great. Um, and so we had a question, is this promotion for Archicad 23 or for 22? Uh, it's for 22, um, but uh, it, it will in 23 comes out um, that will be included with that uh, because the SSA is, uh, is going to be part of that too. So, yeah, the, it'll it'll roll into 23 is the answer to the question. 
Great, perfect. Did anybody else have any questions that they wanted to throw in the chat? Okay, so one is how quickly does it take your firms to implement new versions of ARCHICAD? Mm. Um, I'll jump on that. Um, ARCHICAD, uh, sorry, Graphisoft releases hot fixes about 60 to 90 days after each version is released, and that picks up uh, little bugs or inconsistencies that might be part of the new rollout. It's, it's just a normal thing. Um, so we usually wait until that first hot fix is out. And so we're looking forward, or rather I'm looking forward to spending my holidays here at the office, getting uh, ARCHICAD 23 installed on all the machines and, and ready for folks when they come back in the new year. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, when it so because we're part of the subscription model, um, we will yep. immediately install it when it comes out. And <laughs> um, any new any new uh, project will will be on it immediately. The yeah. big question for us is when do we migrate uh, the old the project and older versions into the newer versions? Because um, that is a a process um, one that requires a um, kind of a a savvy user to know how to optimize that. And so similar to Heather, um, we have uh, some of our favorite Graphisoft uh, experts who will kind of say, hey, I think that, you know, it's, it's ready for this. In other words, we've tested it on one, we've tested it on two, and then we'll pull all 34 projects into that. Um, I'm going to say, you know, we're probably about three months behind the release, um, three to six months, something like that. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And then a uh, final question of the call are any tips and tricks or recommendations for teamwork files or for hot link modules? Uh, I don't have a good hot link tip. And uh, frankly, teamwork um, works so well. I don't know that you need any tips or tricks for that. Um, Anthony, do you, do you guys have any? challenges or bugs that that need a tip or a trick I mean my uh, I know that Graphisoft provides their cloud service um, and a lot of <laughs> firms I've been at have their on-site server I am so happy with the AWS Amazon web server because in a click of a button I can improve my speed they charge you literally by the second so I can turn it on and off so I learned that from a Canadian architect. Um, so I like the Amazon Web Server, uh, okay. but that's not a knock against the Graphsoft server. And then for um, Hotlink modules and um, modules in general, we, we've had really good luck. I learned this from a firm in Culver City, uh, putting the parent files, the origin files on negative stories. So like, um, you know, like a few stories below where you might have a basement. And that way you can redefine the module within the parent file. Um, that gets a little bit tricky when you have sites with multiple buildings. Um, but that negative story uh, trick is one that I think we've immediately picked up on and has been pretty helpful. And you can Google it. It's pretty well documented. Hi. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you everyone for joining AIA California Graphisoft and Anthony and Heather on this webinar. We hope that you all found it beneficial and uh, we recorded it, so we'll be sending it out for your reference. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out to Tom. And other than that, you guys have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.